making uh, stable carbon in the form of biochar um, in one of these truncated um, cone kilns which we manufacture here in Tasmania. So these are laser cut. They have a handle on them so they're easy to move. That's two panels actually together. So they're quite easy to replace should you ever damage a panel or something but like I said they're very solid. That's 1.6 mil stainless steel. They still have the film on them. So you can see that really easy to, um, to put together, you know, there's four to a, a system and then they have two handles on them so you can easily lift them and drag them around. So, so here's our kiln and you can see the base of our kiln is just cut off and with this design we have it, it flares out a little bit so it's really good for digging into the ground. We don't want any oxygen uh, coming up we, we want a sealed base. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. So if we do that, and you can just see inside, it's buried itself just a few millimetres or half an inch into the ground and it will stop oxygen from coming up, which, which will mean we'll get the burn that we need to get. We use any sort of wood that we have for this and we can use anything from small sticks up to wider stuff. In front of me, I've got some just parts from the ends of a previous burn and then we'll, we'll add those to our next burn. Um, I've also got some finished biochar. So you can see, this is a fine grade that we, that we make. And then we, we activate it using um, microbes. So we'll start making this now and you can have a look at, at the principles behind um, how the truncated cone system works. I might just point out that really, um, uh, if you can imagine, it's like having a fire upside down. So we've got a really, um, control burn area, a very small area on the ground and then a larger top part so if we were just having a fire in a fire pit we'd have a, a large base and uh, a smaller top part so this way it's going to stop the wood from turning into ash it's going to pyrolyze between 5 and 700 degrees celsius which will keep the carbon platelets intact um, and then we'll, we'll have a, a stable carbon form rather than, ash, than an ash form and that will um, uh, last in the soil for, for eons, literally. So, and it doesn't matter if we've got really fine carbon like this or, or bigger chunks like this, it all has the same uh, properties that carbon has, which is um, a cation exchange, it'll hold on to nutrient. It's microporous, it'll hold on to moisture and oxygen, uh, it'll act as an insulator, um, it'll um, stop nutrient from washing away from heavy rains. Um, and it'll act as a scaffold for the roots of the plant. Okay, so we'll start, we'll start our fire now. Once we have the fire going in here, we'll get to a point where um, the heat is coming back from the sides and it will make a clean, pretty much smokeless burn. We want to um, burn dry material and preferably non-resinous. If it's resinous like pine, it won't work as effectively as a biochar, so we try to stay away from resinous woods in our biochar manufacture. The wood that we're using today has actually come from a flood, so some of it's a little bit damp. That's where we're getting the smoke from, so you can see from there there's a bit of smoke coming. But generally, as a whole, that's a smokeless burn. I'm quite happy with that. A lot of the oil, the resinous volatile oils that could make a problem for us with stable carbon back in the soil are, are being burnt off, so that resolves that issue. We're retaining about 70% of the carbon that, that we're burning, you know. So rather than just making a pile in your backyard and putting it back into the atmosphere, we're saving most of that carbon 
as a form of stable carbon that we can then put back into the ground into our vegetable garden that will have massive benefits for lowering fertiliser usage, for getting the proper usage out of our fertilisers, for lowering water consumption, a whole range of benefits. So this is really um, a unique and powerful thing to do for, you, for your garden. We've done over 100 burns in these cones and they still work fine. So. Um, it's a very efficient way of making the carbon. I might just make the point between different pieces of wood that we have. Um, this is a, a, a piece of limb wood. This is obviously uh, a larger chunk. And people say, oh, can we use the larger chunks in making the biochar? If you put this into the cone, it will block the heat transference with the other pieces that are in there around the ash, and it won't burn as well. So this, this makes good firewood, so we would suggest that Stuff that can be used as good firewood, keep it for good firewood. That's the sort of the width that you'd probably want to go up to when you're making the firewood. And you can see from the fire behind, we just have it leaning over the sides. And when that when it burns off, then we'll just put that back on top of the up top again. And we'll we can have this fire much higher than that. The, and it's going to burn down every time we fill it up. It's going to burn down very quickly because it's all focused towards the top of that that cone. Inside there now, we're probably about a third of the way through our burn, so we've got quite a bit to go yet. We've filled our cone here, you can see it's pretty much filled at the top. Um, to finish it off, it's really good to get some light pieces, nice dry light pieces that'll get a quick burn going on top. That'll help just finish off that top part of it, so we call it capping it off. And so another 15 minutes and we'll, that'll be finished. an hour into our burn now. We've um, capped it off, uh, pretty much it's ready to go so now we need to put it out and we'll put it out with about 100 maybe 150 litres of water. We've, we've built it up bigger than we probably normally would, just a little bit um, because we've been using the resources that we had here. Sometimes the burn might be a bit less than full, sometimes it might be a bit more, that's fine okay so now I'm going to put the water on. We're probably it's going to make a lot of steam, so I probably just want to be a little bit careful of that. So I'll start doing. Okay, so I'm going to take off the pieces that haven't quite made it. And we can just store them for the next time. Oops, sorry. <laughs> messy, messy. And then we can have a look at what we've got underneath. We can take off the good bits of the biochar. Now. And then just take off these big pieces. You can see some of the top bits have got some good stuff. And then we'll have a look at what's underneath. A minute ago this was a red hot fire. So that you can see that hasn't quite burned. That's just from our last the last part of our fire. Okay. Now you can see here that's all I'm putting my arm right into this. All the way to the base. So I'm gonna to go to the base and I'm pulling out biochar, okay? Now you can if you have a look at this biochar here, there's a small twig that's carbonized all the way through. That's stable carbon. You see there's another small twig. It keeps its form, it's not ash. There's a bigger piece that's all stable carbon, you know, all the way through. So, you know, beautiful stable carbon, look at that. Doesn't matter the size, it's all, it's all come out the same. So, that's just beautiful. So this is maybe 150 litres plus, closer to 200 litres. You know, it would, un unactivated, it would sell for between $1.20 and $1.50 a litre. And if we activated that with some microbes or some fish emulsion, uh, and then grated into a fine, like one centimetre grade, which is quite easy, we'd be looking at about $3 a litre. So then this would become worth up to $600. And um, of course, this is coming off a certified organic farm. Um, so it just adds that bit extra to it, you know, so anyway, I hope that helps you um, Want to make stable carbon and not waste it and put it back into the atmosphere um, As we do so and we will add this back to our veggie beds 
at a rate of 300 to 500 mils uh, per square meter of veggie bed and we'll dig it into the top uh, 100 to 150 mils of, of ground and every year we can add more and we could activate that with microbes also we throw it into our compost um, and the compost will activate it as the compost is maturing you know so we can use it in a in a bunch of different ways. Um.